the name Titanic, so dreadfully Greek. I always thought Aquatram was a perfectly fetching namesake. There are thousands of, of lives at stake. We need to do something right now. Well, I, I do suppose you're right. Best known for my Sterling Cogsmith. Right away. Right away. Mr. Cogsmith, sir? Who's he with? The the Navy, Marines, Coast Guard? <laughs> no, 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 my boy. Something far more powerful. Public relations. Sir? Martin Brandybrook did not become the man he is today by advertising his shortcomings. How many more floozy-laden galas do you expect to attend if an incident like this were to surface? You just got Yes, sir. Right away, sir. And in other news, they're saying that the festival will be held at Downton Abbey this year. Maybe I'll get an invitation. <laughs> no, I won't. We do have some serious news, however. It appears that the newest ocean liner from the White Star Line has crashed. It struck an iceberg. Let's cut now to their press conference. Good evening. At 11.40 p.m. Newfoundland time, the RMS Titanic came to a sudden glacial stop. While not on the ship's itinerary, we are confident that the ship will be very much afloat and will be arriving at its destination. I will not be taking questions at this time. Once again, that was the White Star's comment on the Titanic situation, that the ship is still afloat. Here now to discuss that situation is a panel of analysts. Join with me, the Coast Guard. Ironclad Veterans for Truth. Thank you, Don. The Taft Administration. And joining us with a new hollow technology, Mr. Cogsmith himself. Good evening. Now, my first question actually goes to the representative from the Coast Guard. Is the ship still afloat? Here's the situation, sir. Ice is very unusual to be this far south this time of year. So the ships that are sailing this far south are not equipped to handle this kind of contact with ice. So if the ice is this far south, and if the ship does hit it, there's going to be a pretty serious problem. May I interject? Those are some awfully large suppositions. All we know right now is that the captain felt it was wise to stop for some ice. Um, for all we know, he could just be sculpting a large giraffe for our passengers. We spare no expense here at White Star Line. Well, can we but can we at least agree that it's a possibility? Uh, a small one. Even so, if the ship does hit the ice, there's going to be a very serious problem on our hands. But we won't know how serious of a problem until we know firsthand the integrity and engineering of this vessel. Well, to that point, Mr. Coast Guard, we actually do have one of the shipbuilders of the Titanic here in studio with us. Let's welcome to the studio shipwelder number one. Good evening. Now, just so we can be clear, what exactly happens if the ship were to hit some ice? That depends on a number of factors. Such as? Stop your obfuscating! Tell the truth, you designed a ship that was capable of sinking. Uh, sir, with all due respect, 
we designed the ship to be able to stand up to anything. We went above and beyond all regulations. To be frank, this ship is the safest ever built. It can stand up to icebergs and more. Now, just to make things perfectly clear, the Taft administration is a firm believer that the regulations implemented should make all ships unsinkable. Unfortunately, the Democrats in Congress made this piece of legislation weaken, make room for more earmarking and pork barrel spending. This ship was designed in Ireland. And even so, sir, I don't think it's possible to make it illegal for a ship to sink. I think we're all getting away from the main point here. If the ship did not sink because of its de design flaws, then whose fault was it? Actually, we'll be coming back to that in a moment. There's been a lot of discussion here about this situation. They call it the accident in the Atlantic. One such person who's been talking about that, Tu Schlimberger from his studio in Florida. Let's cut down live to a clip of him. Now, what they, what they were essentially saying was that the Titanic is unsinkable. Now, what they actually said word for word isn't important, but they were flying in the face of God. It's this godlessness and liberal activism that is sinking the Titanic. Not ice, not water. Godlessness. Not convinced? Then take this report that they're trying to get all the women off of the ship. That, why would you do that? I'll tell you why. It's so that they can live their homosexual lifestyle free of women. They're going to be sinning over and over again, rubbing their sinewy bodies against each other, shoving their godless fag lifestyle down our throats in a liberty-hating orgy of gayness. This is only God's cleansing work. Removing the world of these liberal gays that want to have sex and be rescued by our men and women in uniform. That's right. They want us to pay for their homosexuality. They want to be paid to have sex. What does that make them? Prostitutes. Slutty prostitutes. Gay slutty prostitutes. Gay liberal Godless, slutty prostitutes. This isn't a design flaw in the Titanic. It's a design flaw in society. It's the liberals trying to cover up what is really happening. Whew. Yikes. What controversial claims? What exactly do you guys make of this liberal cover-up? That is exactly what I am saying. This is a conspiracy by the government to get rid of lower class people. Sure, the, the boat is going to sink, but the rich people get the lifeboats. Getting The government wants to get rid of all of the lower classes. Do you have any idea exactly how ridiculous that sounds? That's preposterous. You're preposterous! If you expect the American populace to believe that ice broke the Titanic, then you are a fool, sir. For example... Ice is made out of water. The Titanic is made out of metal. When I take this ice and put it against this metal, the ice breaks, not the metal. You know, I'm not saying he's right, but he could be. Uh, what? Look, I, I can confirm that this was not an inside job by the American government in order to take down the Titanic. Now. I can tell you that there are plenty of other groups out there who might want to sink a ship full of Americans. That's exactly what we would expect you to say. Well, it could have been a terrorist plot. I mean, that is something that happens to companies all the time, and the people who own the company are no way at fault in that sort of situation. Look, the fact is that we really don't know what happened. It could have been the Russians, it could have been the Germans, and I mean, frankly, for all we know, it could have even been the Bolsheviks. You might be onto something. Ice is cold, and so is Russia. Gentlemen, the boat is still sinking. Aren't we losing sight of the bigger picture? This is the bigger picture. Are you un-American? <laughs> sir, no, sir! Clearly, we have some unanswered questions here, such as who's at fault. But in order to get a read on the pulse of what's going on and to think, who might have done this dastardly deed on American men and women? Let's go now to our chief telegramosphere correspondent, Tiny Twitter Tim. 
Tiny Twitter Tim here, and we have been getting a lot of viewer responses on this issue. Looks like we have one right here. It says, I think it was the Germans. Stop. I don't trust them or their spiky helmets. Stop. Anyone who dresses that funnily is highly suspect. Stop. Hashtag military fashion. And a lot of people seem to be thinking that this is the Germans. Now, the telegram sphere is positively ablaze, and back to you. Well, this sounds like a deep and thorough discussion of the issues with the world's most astute minds. Now, gentlemen, I have good news. We've declared war on Germany. And why? Because it makes sense. Yes, sir. That'll teach those Germans they had to come in with that Beethoven fellow. Indeed. Men, this is a great victory for American citizens all over the world. Yes, yes. All those things. Hurrah, sir. Let's go get those Jerry bastards. Never liked them anyway. That's right, sauerkraut is indoctrinating our children. I don't like it. It's dirty and smelly. Let's go to war, fellas. War. It's very good to see uh, you again. Excellent. How's Mr. Taft doing? That is always.